Mm, I don't know. <laughs> I still feel that I'm new to this. Really? My turn. Yeah, I mean, with you, it was the first one back then, and probably had like one or two more, and you, we're here. You you say back then like it was a year ago, Andra. <laughs> it feels like a year. It feels like I've gone through so much. Really, really. What I mean, what what has transpired since we last spoke? Oh my God. I was in probably seven dimensions at the same time. Like I can't, I can't really relate. I've I've been in Amsterdam with uh, visiting a friend. Okay. Like my really good friend Sabine, and um, yeah, just a lot of a lot of healing and a lot of growth. I feel like I'm on this ramp, and I feel that I'm just having a lot of opportunities to heal things within myself with other people that i don't know did i sign up for this i don't know. it's just it's just a crazy challenge wow it you said it felt like a year has passed yeah it feels like it feels like a lot of time but um you know since my awakening it feels like this it feels like time is moving very differently okay i don't know how it is for you i'm sure that you also have these moments where you kind of experience time a little bit like that it moves slower or faster it's just it's very different so do you feel like things are sped up right now yeah yeah things are definitely spinning up like every single week <laughs> okay okay so when you say like did i sign up for this that feeling of did i sign up for this wh where does that feeling you feel come from mm -hmm. I think it's um, it's from a feeling that I jumped on a train um, and I don't necessarily have control over like how fast it goes. Mm. And I just have to remind myself all the time that it is, you know, for my personal growth and it is for my higher alignment. And um, it ultimately happens for me, not to me. Mm. And, and so I'm just going with the flow as much as I can. Okay. You know, Andra, I love your your philosophy, the way that you think and the way that you approach these things, because it's a wonderful thing to be able to say to yourself, you know, instead of why is this happening to me? You could say, why is this happening for me? Or what is this teaching me? You know, what? how is this expanding me? How is this evolving me? Like, that's a lovely perspective. You know? Yeah, I think I think once you kind of understand that you are creating your own challenges and your own tests you know you're trying to teach yourself something mm -hmm. then the whole life becomes much easier you know it kind of becomes like a game it's not like you know i'm gonna fail if i'm starting this or if i'm you know choosing to stay on this train yeah. but i'm gonna be open and let's play the game right i love that, that. you know that feeling of because we we a lot of us we do have that feeling of thinking that we're failing or thinking that we're not in alignment or thinking that we're not going towards something that's that's growing and flowing in the right direction you know mm -hmm. and, and it's like we have a disconnection with our destiny or so or something you know of the sort so when it comes to that feeling of failure or that feeling of like oh have i failed am i not doing the right thing have you always battled that like has that always been challenging for you it was because while growing up, I've always made sure that I'd never make any mistakes. Like this was my, this was my upbringing, you know, just uh, being perfect as, as a well-behaved girl. For me, it was very important to do everything perfect because if I do that, then I'm going to be liked. And if I do that, then everyone else will approve of me. So only recently you know when i say recently i say like my like two years ago i realized that wait a second like this is not how we should live especially like as women we have a lot of power and we have a lot of a lot of things to say and and uh, we have agency over our lives and there's so much work to do with other women and with other people that feel the same so i'm um, very honored you know to have to have been given the chance to see um, the truth. Yeah. Uh, I agree. You know, it's so much power, you know, so much power in you. Like when you speak, we, we feel the energy, we feel the enthusiasm. And I, I sense your conviction 
with the things that you speak of and that is one you know of the qualities that i admire about you because you know when you were talking about seeking approval or or the feeling of needing to be perfect right like like that perfectionism i feel is is one of the imposter syndromes that we often go through yeah who do you feel was you know before two years ago who was one of the people that you were seeking approval of well of course my dad <laughs> i don't know i have to say of course but this is usually what happens you know if you're a woman you are seeking approval of your parents and a lot of times it's your dad mm -hmm. so i did have quite some <clears throat> you know conflicts with him mm -hmm. around that and i remember like just waking up like after after this awakening and and saying like well you know like i'm quitting my job i'm traveling the world i'm you know, like I'm becoming myself and, and let's see what happens. And, and I also want to do more with, you know, energy work with yoga. And he said, I remember he saying, um, well, you know, you can do all, all that if you prove to me that you can earn money. And if you prove to me that with this coaching or like energy work or whatever you do, um, that you're going to earn money and you're going to be successful. And then I remember saying, I don't have to prove anything to anyone. I don't have to prove anything to you. Like I live my whole life trying to prove things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm done. Wow. Well, so he wasn't, he wasn't yet sold on the idea. <laughs> He's not sold on the idea, but you know, it doesn't really matter. Like I have to, I have to believe in myself. Otherwise, like who else will believe in me or my dreams? Right. So when you said that, you know when you stood firm on on your own principles or or when you stood firm on your own faith in your own vocation and your own calling and your own direction you know and had that inner reflection how did he how did he receive that i uh, i think it was because you know he didn't necessarily share um i mean you know, for, for us, it was very important growing up to not be very emotional about things, be more rational. And and so I think that it did impact him, um, you know, this feeling of, oh, my God, I'm going to lose my, <laughs> you know, I'm going to lose my daughter. And what is she doing? And like, it was a sense of like both I'm losing control, mm. but also this kind of feeling of, um I feel and I hope that it was a sense of proudness of like, okay, finally, you know, she's stepping up to become a woman. So you go, girl, you know, even if you didn't say that, I felt that, you know, from him, like, you go, girl, oh. <laughs> you take power in your own hands. Okay, okay. So in the open, he was saying, ah, you know, you felt like he was losing control of, of his little girl, but, but beneath the surface, you could feel he was proud. Yeah. I could feel that and I could feel that they are proud like even if they're not saying and that's why I love them so much because I don't right now I don't need that approval I just need a little bit of acceptance and I feel that I've received this acceptance of who I am what I want to do and that's more than enough you know it's just um so okay. far yeah. yeah more than enough you know more than enough and you know Andra when it comes to approving yourself and accepting yourself what do you feel is something that you could say today that you are unashamed to be proud of? You know, what is something that you are proud of yourself for without, you know, without any shame? Mm. <laughs> I feel that nowadays I'm not so afraid of being myself, mm. of uh, facing conflict, because I was always, um, I was always very attentive and very careful to not get into conflict because if i do i'm not going to be liked anymore so i would just be as i mentioned before well behaved mm -hmm. and very nice and people pleasing and all of that um in order for in order for people to to just like me and and i don't need that anymore so i think i'm very proud to say like you know when it comes to a conflict i can set healthy boundaries Mm. And I can also stand my ground regarding, well, I do trust my sovereignty. I do trust my, my own wisdom, you know, and that I have something to say. I have something to share and I'm going to be authentic about it. I'm going to be expressive about it. And, 
if you don't like it, then we can go into a discussion. We can go into a conflict, but I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to back away from this. So I think that's, that's quite good. It is. It's, it is quite good. And it's, it's a form I feel where we can see our own greatness, you know, when you allow the inner you to shine and you're taking the time to really nourish your own inner life it's like your authenticity like you said authenticity mm -hmm. you know it has no competition we can always embrace our uniqueness mm -hmm. and the things that make you you the things that only you can do you know yeah so yeah we all have it, special energy i'm sure <laughs> we, we for sure do you know and you know when you were talking about boundaries it's actually a beautiful thing to talk about boundaries because I once heard, I don't know if you've heard this, Andra, but there was a speaker, her name is Brene Brown. You ever heard of Brene Brown? Mm -hmm. okay. okay. And she talked about boundaries and she said that, you know, one of the most compassionate things that you can actually do for yourself and for another person is that, like, it is to establish boundaries, yeah. you know? healthy boundaries like you're not only respecting you but you're respecting them as well mm, that's so good yeah and these healthy boundaries also help you to create the safe space for authentic expression mm. you know um by having this healthy boundaries you actually allow yourself to be vulnerable and to see the strength and vulnerability because before before putting these boundaries it's very hard for you to just feel safe enough to, to share. And I think like everything is related to that. So that's very beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's all related, you know, it's all connected. It's all intertwined. And when it comes to the times that you might find where you're needing to establish those healthy boundaries, also within like relationships, I like what you had said, you put up a post recently about multi-dimensional relationships, you know, mm -hmm. and it was something to be said of like you said whenever conflict comes how do you feel you deal differently with conflict today in in that way when it comes to you know those multi-dimensional relationships as you put it <laughs> um well i do feel that nowadays um i am much much better at letting my guard down letting myself be seen um feeling that people are not out there to attack me. I can be vulnerable. Um, I can allow myself to be misunderstood. I'm not afraid of that, right? To be misunderstood, to be wrong. And one of the shadows that I had before going in conflict, if I ever went into a conflict, because it was not very easy, um, was um, something that I picked up from, from my parents as well, is this need to be right. Mm -hmm. um, everything in duality and you you also mentioned you know comparing like this was another shadow that I had like always being like well if I feel right then the other person shouldn't be right or they shouldn't know the truth you know like it's, it's only one person that has the ultimate truth and right mm -hmm. now by having this kind of multi-dimensional relationships and very beautiful nourishing connections I feel that I I can allow myself to to explore the other side of the coin, you know, to explore their truth as well and, and take the time to do that. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree. It, it's, that's one of the things that I love about you as well, Andra, that you're, you're unafraid to, to be wrong. You don't have to prove or you don't have to, to be right. Like the, the whole feeling of, of that we are infallible or that human beings are fallible, that we, we make mistakes, we get things wrong, or we, we have ideas that we can have different ideas or that we can see things differently through another lens, you know? Yeah. Through another perspective, through another vantage point or from another angle, mm. you know, from the view. So I love that you're able to do that for yourself and you're able to do that with another in those sort of, you know, relationships because that was one thing that I struggled with for a long time. Yeah. And Oh my goodness, you know, I'm still I'm learning, you know, I'm still learning because, you know, what, what you would say about the need to be right or that if somebody is always right, you, you mentioned a word that I had never heard before and it was called non-absolutism. Mm, yes. So where did this come from and, and how does that speak to you? 
Mm, I, well, I had a um, kind of a conflict with somebody that was very close to me um, some time ago. I mean, probably like a month ago. Mm-hmm. And and she she brought this up about me um, that I do find I do always strive to find this absolute truth. And we did have a lot of uh, conversations in our community in Costa Rica. You know, like is there such thing? Like, do we need to to have it? Do we need to um, know it? You know, this absolute truth and understanding right now you know when you're maturing <laughs> in the in the lifetimes you know that that we're going through um maturing understand that we don't we don't need to have that absolute truth and there is no such thing basically so um i think this resonates with me a lot to to be able to hold um duality in the mind so basically like um you know, it's it's both good and bad at the same time. It's both the strength and weakness. It's both light and darkness. It's both this and that. And still be able, like mentioned today, still be able to function, you know, like still be able to like go out into the world and live your life knowing that that's, that's all there in the present moment and not right. losing not losing it because the ego or the identity you know wants to grab hold on to like no no no, i'm right and and i know the truth and i have the ultimate uh you know the absolute um ideas or like the yeah whatever is righteous right like i i feel that i'm righteous (laughs) and so yeah I, i think i think it's just a journey to to find this out it is you know and and what a journey you know what a journey be in what a journey to be on and what a journey to travel because when you said andra that two opposing ideas you know to have two opposing things in the same mind at the same time mm. you know, that, that you said it was actually a sign of wisdom or a sign of intelligence for one to be able to hold you know two opposing ideas i thought that was amazing mm. you know so like that spoke to you as well that it was not a hindrance but it was actually, you know, that you were a cut above to be able to hold two opposing views at the same time. Yes, I think I think this this is something that came to me. My conflicts, like in the past, in the past one or two months, and um, knowing that this is my greatest shadow, and I'm so deeply grateful for the people in my life, like my friends, my family, my partner, to show me that hey this is your shadow like you you need to be seeing this you know because you don't want to be you don't want to be growing and you know you have this ideal of for example organizing this retreat and so on if you cannot hold if you cannot hold the two dualities in your mind and just see that both of them are are okay so so holding two dualities at the same time and seeing that it's both okay it's both okay, yeah, and uh, it's uh, as, as someone mentioned in the chat, you know, like it's just it's just the consciousness, like the truth, you know, the truth of higher consciousness. Mm. So and- uncovering that also, like what I want wanted to mention is like uncovering that and 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 dispelling like the illusions that we have, you know, in our mind. Mm-hmm. I think this is one of the things that I. That's definitely my passion. Usually, people ask me like, "What are your passions?" Like, you know, thinking in terms of you know skiing or uh you know like painting and so on and i do have some of them but uh when it comes to dispelling illusions and and healing my shadows especially because for me it was quite a spiritual awakening it was like bam you know and right now i feel like okay like what else what else do i do do i need to see you know (laughs) so uh, it's quite interesting for me you know what what do you feel like gives you a sense of comfort or even contentment when you are not in confinement with an absolute truth, like with non-absolutism, knowing that there's no absolute truth, how do you feel like that actually, you know, that that you actually carry that and are content, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, I think I'm content just because I know that we are all on a path of self-discovery and, and feeling more in alignment with our soul and i think what gives me contentment is this idea of i want to become the best version of myself which is um going away from false humility or from arrogance 
to real humility, you know, and, and people in my life that show me like, this is what you still need to heal, or this is what you still need to learn. Those are the angels, you know, so this is the comfort that I have, that we are all on a path of self discovery, and nobody has it all figured out. You know, it, I think this is also the comfort, like there's no, there is no absolute truth. And it's just a matter of perspective. And so, okay, like I can choose, you know, what perspective I I want to have um, in a conflict or uh, like for a certain situation. So, mm -hmm. yeah, good. I like this because it's, you know, you're a self discovery guide. So you're helping others on their path to self discovery. And you're saying other people are also helping you on your path to self discovery. So it's like, you know, just like you said something, uh, wasn't it your name, your name, the dream, the dream come back home, right? Yeah. Was yeah. it, it again the dream that we're coming back home? Exactly. The dream of soldiers to come back home to their families, like from war. Right. Right. So I mean, that that sounds like self discovery to me when you when you can kind of metaphorically put it in that light of, you know, this dream of helping others to come back home and also others helping you to come back home. We're just walking each other home. We're just walking other home and and I think that's very beautiful because this is how we should live and we shouldn't live in in comparison you know and it's like victim consciousness comparison blaming judging I mm -hmm. think the the future will be like you know community where we can all help each other awaken and heal so that we can become we can become even better so I do know that for example me trying to manifest anything in my life whether it's the research retreat or whatever it might be it all starts within and if i if i don't look at myself if i don't look at my shadows and if i'm not humble enough to learn everything that i need to learn and heal um it's gonna be quite hard for me to to manifest any retreat or any like self-discovery boot camp that i have you know okay that's a big one so so like when you don't go within you go without yes yeah, that's a much harder road. <laughs> it's going to be hard. It's going to be tough. Okay. And a lot of people try to manifest in that way, you know, like I, I've been there. I've been on the other side, you know, I've been working in marketing my whole life. So I've been trying to manifest and to bring people in and to convince them of clients, clients, you know, pr proposals and visions uh, by just going without, like not within. So. Mm -hmm. You know, earlier you talked about your passions, Andra, and I'd love to speak about one of your, pa well, I, I'm only assuming it's a passion because I saw that you put up uh, a post, it was a while ago on your story about World of Warcraft. <laughs> <laughs> and it was funny because you, you wrote underneath it, it was like, how to deal with the storm. Mm. And mm -hmm. you were signed up to World of Warcraft, you had like a golden ticket for World of Warcraft. So you know, I'm, I used to be a big time gamer, nice. you know, for, for, for my life, I was playing, you know, RPGs, MMORPGs, like all sorts of games. So what, what is like World of Warcraft, when you are in that virtual world, you know, what, what sense do you get? And what is your history when it comes to video gaming? Mm. <laughs> it's very nice to see a fellow gamer here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I see you. <laughs> um, I'm sure that we've met in the virtual world somewhere. Um, <laughs> no, but uh, like, like uh, I, I was a gamer as well back in the days. I think I played like probably six or seven years in World of Warcraft. And it was my way to deal with the fact that I wasn't, I had this idea that I wasn't fitting in. Mm. So back then I was using it as an escape. Um, but at the same time you know it's both an escape and also like i was choosing to be in this world which feels magical and um feels so aligned with who i am inside which is this you know probably this fairy <laughs> like being fairy and and the creator of my own reality you know because in the rpg is like you have a character and you can make it you know a priest a mage a druid or whatever and then you can give it the qualities that you want. And 
this is you know the first time that I started to to explore um, to explore mana, you know, prana, explore like you know working with energy and and all these things, and it really opened not not my mind necessarily, but it opened my soul to something that is much greater than this material existence you know and a lot of people are saying yeah yeah that's stupid you know why would you play so much you're just wasting your life away and blah, blah, blah. but it was like world of warcraft it was actually the cornerstone of my awakening and a lot of people like a lot of things contributed to that but world of warcraft was definitely a very big component of my awakening wow thank you for sharing this you know it's it's great to hear and just feel this side of you, you know, the side that, that is able to explore and, you know, adventure. And I know that, you know, people used to go on raids and they used to go on adventures and quests and journeys together. And, you know, you're acquiring loot, you're acquiring skills and attributes and, you know, leveling up your avatar, you're customizing it to your, your unique specifications. So if you could tell us, like, what was your character that you might have gotten to a high level you know, what, what kind of character were they? Were they like an elf or an orc or a mage or a druid? Like, what kind of was that? Uh, most of the times it was an elf. Okay. And the name was Cephalaris. And I definitely like that idea. I mean, I definitely like, like um, fulfilling quests and going on missions and all of that, you know, like leveling up in that way. But I think one of the biggest things that I got out of World of Warcraft was the storyline and the idea that I could be exploring the world, you know, that I've created. And this is why I wanted to download it now. And I started to download, but then I realized, oh my God, it takes like two days. <laughs> so I <completely> gave up. <laughs> Probably I don't even have storage for that. Um, my whole idea was to just go in and explore the world, you know, not even like do any quests, just like go and walk until the edge of the world, you know, probably go through some portals and stuff. <laughs> yes. I love this. You know, Cep you said Cephalaris? Cephalaris, yeah. Cephalaris, and it was an L. Yeah. Okay. Was it like a support or was it like a tank or was it like, what, what kind of character was it or archetype? Uh, what do you mean? Like, like mage? Were you like casting? Uh, or? Um, yeah, yeah, no, it was mage probably. Okay. Yeah, 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 okay. definitely. So you're casting magic, but you're in this elf character, Cephalaris, and you're traveling. So, you know, I like this because a lot of the times, Andra, they say that art imitates life. Mm. And, and the way that we construct and even the way that we have our characters the way that we utilize them in that virtual reality sometimes they imitate what we do in this reality you know mm. or in our subconscious or our aspirations you know yeah. our, our, our imagination is like an imitation <laughs> in that in that creation right? right so it's amazing to me that you say that you were really just interested in adventuring just traveling just exploring more of the game world and it's cool because you're doing the same thing in this one yeah, you know and also because as i played world of warcraft i know that this is a game i'm not delusional you know but i'd have another kind of mentality you know like going about my challenges oh they're you know they're just quests like i'm gonna level up <laughs> you know it's uh i even if i die you know i come back <laughs> i come back in another incarnation and another one and like you know well like the, there is no fear but what were you in world of warcraft actually so World of Warcraft, I wasn't specialized in World of Warcraft. Mainly I was doing like Elder, the Elder Scrolls series. Mm -hmm. So Skyrim, Oblivion, and Morrowind, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So that was the series that I played. But I was, uh, what was I? A Red Guard. I know I did a lot of magic. So I had uh, the illusion spells. I would cast. But then I also would go invisible. I had invisibility, so I would get in and get out at different places. What is it? And I kind of, go ahead. Spell. What is an illusion spell? So an illusion spell was one of those spells that you would cast to either you would make things appear or disappear. You could make yourself appear, disappear. You could also, with mysticism, you could almost like a telekinesis, like a psychokinesis. Mm -hmm. You can move 
objects with your mind, almost like you're using the force. I was using the force. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, and I also enjoyed summoning things. So I was conjuring things, so conjuration. And then there was all sorts of alteration. There was a lot of different spells. You're taking me back down memory lane right now. You're taking me, <laughs> You're taking me back. But I, I did enjoy the challenge. And I enjoyed, you know, finding the balance and discovering new talents, you know? So it was, it was a great exploration at the time for me to understand in my own mind that no matter what adversity might come my way, that a setback was not in the way, but on the way. Mm. You know? So that kind of reframed my mind in that way to, to say challenge accepted. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And you're doing that, I, I think, nowadays, right? You say, well, challenge accepted. <laughs> I have my powers of, you know, illusion, dispelling illusion, bringing illusion. So I feel that some of that is still within you. Right. Right. But because you, you know, like, I, I, I was part of your Qigong practice. And it's so beautiful, right? And I, like, after, after that practice today, I really felt like this, this is magical. Like, I wasn't in nature, because I'm sure that if you're in nature and if you're, like, with, your, with the soles of your feet on the ground, mm -hmm. it feels, like, completely different. But I was, like, still outside and I was, you know, taking in the energy and really feeling it. And just after, like, 10 minutes, I was, like, buzzing. And I was, like... But that's exactly what you're doing, you know, probably what you did in the, in the game, you know, using your prana, using magic. Yeah, yeah, because you even use the word mana, you know, mana, like, it's, it goes hand in hand with prana, like we had different bars, right? Yeah. You know, in certain games, you might have your, your health bar, your vitality bar, your, your stamina bar, but then you also have that mana, mm. you know? Yeah, yeah. That, we have the same. We have mana. We have the health bar. During our life, we have other bars, you know. Yeah. So increase that bar, you know. Keeping that bar filled, you know. And it's amazing because, you know, there's different parallels as well. Like with the NPCs, they call NPCs like you know non-playing characters. Those who don't who don't know the lingo of the the game world, but a non <laughs> A, a non-playing character is an NPC and you just see these people who are kind of like in the matrix they're just undergoing their own programming you know mm -hmm. they just have they have an objective they have a directive and that's it mm. you know they don't really do anything outside of those parameters so I feel like you in in real like in this existence you're not an NPC you're an actual playing character you're out here doing things growing and just always becoming you know <laughs> yeah i actually want to ask you because i know about the theory of uh npcs you know the like in, in the spiritual community and i i do feel uh some resonance with that also like you know with probably my parents or with other people that i meet um but then i came across some of lila goal i came across a post saying that this whole theory is basically spiritual ego and spiritual narcissism mm. and uh i was like okay okay i can also see that you know because like everybody is a player of this game you know even if they're not awake they're they're still like in in the system even if you're awake and out on matrix you're still in some kind of matrix <laughs> and so i was considering you know like what are your views on on this like and this is, i think this is quite interesting to me do you really believe that like it was a theory it was a theory that i saw and it, it's it begs the question, because just like you said, even if we're, you know, we're in the system, we're still in the game, we're still playing, you know? So it's like, I like how you see both, you know? I like how it's not just either or, it's not just black or white, but it's, you know, it's both. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm so fascinated by these things, and I'm so fascinated by... Um, you know, picking up on belief system or picking up on especially spiritual concepts, right? Since I woke up, I'm taking on spiritual concepts, whether I understand them or not, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, and then I come across like, uh, you know, this uh, Instagram accounts or like the conspiracy saying, oh, you know, like that's definitely spiritual ego. And I'm thinking like, 
wait a second. And then I, it really feels like my beliefs are being shattered again. And then I start on <laughs> work again. And, and I, don't, I, don't, I don't mind it because I'm not taking it personally. Um, but it's just very fascinating to me to be like, well, I, be I, I, I see both realities. So I think that's my challenge in this lifetime, you know, like just see both realities and be fine with it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we need people who can see both, mm -hmm. you know, people who are able to see both sides, just like the Avatar, The Last Airbender. Yeah. You know, in the Avatar, The Last Airbender, the Avatar is always the one that, you know, that bridges the gap that bridges mm -hmm. worlds, the, the physical world and the spiritual, <laughs> right? You know, that today, today in the Tolkien, yeah, yeah. Today in the Tolkien, in the Galactic Maya calendar, we are in the World Bridger Day, uh, the day of the World Bridger. So it's a synchronicity that you <laughs> that you're, you're very connected. Um, yeah, it's the, it's the one that builds the bridge between, between worlds, between spirit and living, or like spirit and material, between spirit and... <clears throat> um you know dead and everything like it's it's uh i know some people that are you know under this archetype of the world bridger and it really feels like for them it's much easier to go through this some symbolic deaths of ah you know like i have this identity just let it let it go you know i'm i'm completely down for reset okay okay so what has been one of your favorite ways to bridge that you know, to, to bridge those worlds together, not only for yourself, mm -hmm. but, but for someone else? Mm, that's a good question. <laughs> Do you, what is my the best? How did you frame it? The best way yeah. that my most favorite? Your favorite ways to, to bridge that, mm -hmm. you know? Mm. I feel that that is definitely one of my tasks in this lifetime because also in this calendar specifically my guide is the skywalker and the skywalker is the one not that builds the bridge but that walks on the bridge so the world bridger is the one that you know creates the bridge between the worlds but the skywalker is the one that you know takes the backpack and be like okay so i'm gonna go there i'm gonna take the wisdom from up there somewhere i'm gonna bring the wisdom to the earth so i think one of the ways that i'm trying to do that um is by living uh, with sacred intentionality, like what I mentioned. Uh, I don't know what I mentioned, but anyway. Um, sacred intentionality is basically when you take your daily life and every single uh, activity that you are undergoing, you are bringing sacredness to it. And you are seeing that every single thing, whether you're engaging in a shower, whether you're having a cigarette, whether you're having a phone call, it can be made sacred. And mm. I, I do feel that one of my responsibilities in this lifetime is to bring this sacredness to the people, to the NPCs, like let's use, you know, buzzwords right now or keywords, <laughs> or to the people that don't, that are not so spiritual, that don't believe in these things, and they don't believe that they even have a soul, you know, but they, um, they can still, you know, bring some intention, like before lighting up that cigarette and be like, okay, my intention is that, you know, I find a little bit more grounding or calmness, you know, and then they, they do it. You know, because not everybody, not everybody can have a sacred cacao ceremony, like every time, and especially like a lot of people don't believe in that. They don't have the possibility to have that. Um, and I was fortunate enough to sit in ceremony, to sit in plant ceremonies, to, you know, and so I can bring some of that, you know, like bits and pieces of the sacred intentionality into, into people that, you know, don't have access to. Yes, bits and pieces of sacred intentionality. <laughs> I love that. So, pieces of sacred intentionality. Yeah. Put in the pieces, you know, bring in the bits and pieces. I love this. I love this because it seems like you're, like you said, you're not just a world bridger, but you're also a bridge walker. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. I walk her, exactly. Yeah. yeah I walk her. You walk along the bridge, <laughs> you know? Yeah. You, you, you pave the way, you, you blaze the trail, you know, a pioneer. <laughs> yeah, I, I just show people, you know, how to walk on the bridge because probably like people, you know, they will be stuck on the bridge. <laughs> you know, they will be like, whoa, what is this? You know, like between, because I've, I've been between both worlds. Like I've been, 
uh, you know, pre-awakening and then all of a sudden it, some people are awakening gradually, but for me it was quite spontaneous. So I feel that a lot of people in the future will be going through this experience, like, you know, being on that bridge and not knowing like what is left and right, like where should I, should I go back now? You know, like, cause I did want to go back after my spiritual awakening. I was like, I don't want to be feeling all these things. I don't want to, you know, lose my, lose my uh, identities and my job and my relationship and so on. Um, so I feel that, you know, just guiding people or having somebody to, to walk alongside you, I think it's so helpful, um, in the future, especially. Super. You know, especially one who has the experience, you know, one who has the expertise, one who has the wisdom that is acquired through the journey, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. through the walking, the wisdom through walking, like they say, to, to know the road ahead ask those coming back you know <laughs> yeah so you've you've been over the bridge you've been across the bridge you've probably been under the bridge you've been stuck on the bridge you've been you know you you know about it so it's 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 really cool to see that you're allowing people to see that and allowing them to be that you know it's it's very freeing you know very freeing and also to to tell people that it's all part of the process yeah. you know I feel that a lot of people are just um, stuck in certain stages of their spiritual development and they tend to freak out and they tend to be like, whoa, like this stage will last forever and I'm going to be stuck here for the rest of my life. And it's like, no, 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 no. Once you're on this, it's just part of the process. And once you start to see that way and once you start to see that everything is happening for you, like the start of the conversation, it's, uh, it's much easier to keep moving, to keep moving, just keep moving, you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah like Dory said, just keep swimming, just you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh. Oh, Andra, you said this is your task. It really, when you said that, I felt the gravity of that. When you said this is my task, it felt like a, like a main quest, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, well, yeah, yeah, exactly. I, if we're talking a world of Warcrafters, it's that's definitely like the main quest to achieve. I don't know, experience um, sixty four, probably. Let's say <laughs> sixty four. I don't know, jinkies. <laughs> So if if you would indulge me, I'd love to play a little game with you. Is that cool? Sure. Okay. So this is gonna be like a just a rapid fire. Uh, two, three, four, five. I think we'll just say like five. I'm gonna just say five words, and just one word at a time. Mm -hmm. And you just the first thing that comes to your mind, however long or short. Whenever I say this word, you just say whatever comes to your mind. How about it? Sure. Fire. <laughs> First word that comes to my mind. Okay, let's go. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. Remember. Air. Elevate. Soul. Surrender. Trust. Evolve. Heart. Trust. <laughs> Intuition. <laughs> <laughs> you love my heart. <laughs> Reset, yay. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> yes. So I, I love, you know, the word you use, like your, your heart, you know, intuition and you know, just talking about this when you when you hear these words, because these are very intentional words. Mm. You know, it doesn't feel like just a just a random acronym. It feels very intentional. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you develop this, like what what do you feel like was your overall intention for, for people to see or for people to really gather from this this word reset? Mm -hmm. You know? I um well a lot of things that I'm doing for reset, it feels like it's channeled. Um, so my mind is not very present with um, specific goal or intention in mind. Mm -hmm. So more like sitting in meditation and being like, what does reset mean? Mm -hmm. You know, asking either myself or in the Akashic Records, whatever. 
and I'm being like, what does it mean? And then, you know, it just comes like R is for this, you know, E is for that. And I'm like, whoa, that's quite powerful. You know, it's, it's quite big. And so I'm sending that over because I'm not, I'm not entirely sure if like what I'm channeling makes sense, you know, for people. And so I'm asking for feedback. I'm, I'm sending it in my community and I'm asking like, does this make any sense to you? You know, like evolve with the planet because I really feel, you know, I really feel everything. Um, but it also has to, has to make sense to the participants that will be joining. So um, I think that for me, reset or what I want people to experience when they feel into that word is this possibility of living in another way. And this is exactly like what I mentioned in the post in the beginning is um, by you remembering, you know, who you are and that you have a destiny, by you going through all those stages of coming back home, of trusting your intuition, you can also evolve your consciousness to a way that gets you out of the matrix and, you know, puts you in the driver's seat of your life and be like, well, actually, this is what I feel like doing right now. This is how I should live, which is closer to nature, in a community, everything else, you know? So I really hope that this, this will happen. Mm, it's happening, you know? <laughs> it's happening. It's happening in real time. In real time, it's happening right now, you know? Mm -hmm. And what do you feel, Andra, what do you feel was, was something that you are so grateful to remember? Mm. <clears throat> I mean, <laughs> I don't know. Like, I think one of the things that I, I remembered was um, my connection to, to the moon. Mm -hmm. And it feels, it feels really weird, you know, but I, I felt that because I was, I started with the shaman in Mexico and he gave me this reading of, um, of the Tolkien, like the like, galactic signature reading. Mm -hmm. And he told me like, you're the red cosmic moon and, and this is your guide and these are your superpowers and la la la. And, you know, like listening about the moon and the superpowers and hidden powers. And I, I'm not that, you know, like, mm -mm. like that's not my essence. And he even said, you know, like your hidden power is for example, the human and the human is to influence people. And I'm like, no way like I would never influence anyone <laughs> like and this was like two years ago and um and then I went into Vipassana and I was like well, well wait a second like you know all these limiting beliefs and I remembered I remembered that I have a soul I have a purpose in this earth and everything that I've acquired in my life they're just limiting beliefs to actually like not do it. And I'm like, but why not do it? There was a, so much fear, you know, of like me hiding or staying small, dimming my light. So I just had to remember about like, you know, in my personal case, it's like this connection to the moon and, and you know, the superpowers that I have, the purpose. Um, but this is what I remembered. And I think that for everyone, it's probably something else that they have to remember about their, their, their essence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we all have something else that we must remember about our essence. There's always something that, that we have to remember. Yeah, I feel, I feel that that is exactly the case. And I never understood the term remembering until like maybe a year ago. I never felt it, you know, like remember, like what do you need to remember? Um, maybe like one and a half years ago and only like probably like down the line, I, I, I was like, Ah, now I understand. Now, like, it really, like, sinks in, like, what I have to remember. Because if we do have a destiny and if we do, like, our lives are predetermined in a way, you know, by our higher self, by whatever contract you made, you know, you just have to remember these things. And you just have to remember, like, why you came here. Like, what is, what is it that you have to fulfill? And once you remember and once you see it, it will be much easier for you to actually go do it. You will just have the courage to take the leap to do it. Until then, your mind will be like, oh, no, but I'm not this. I'm not that. I, I would never, you know, be able to achieve certain things. And right. so, so the story you know the narrative of of you know the the self-doubt mm -hmm. you know self-doubt the self 
maybe thinking that we aren't enough or we don't already have enough within and just remembering that because if you say andra that there's something that we always must remember is there also something that we always must surrender like do surrender does that go hand in hand like what do you what do you feel was one of the most challenging things for you to surrender when it came to that mm um i think for me thank you for the question was probably like surrendering my identities because like until that moment i was holding on so strongly to my two identities that i had you know the growth hacker in vienna the yoga teacher mm -hmm. like everything else you know i I've, i've created this world for myself in order to to be safe mm -hmm. right to have some some certain like some sense of security of this is who i am right like this this kind of security of like this is who i am as a personality and so everybody else should know who i am and so even if like i was insecure and and i was at least like on the outside i could portray that you know i'm a growth hacker that i'm a yoga teacher that i'm this or that right and so my biggest challenge was to see well what if i let go of all identities that i created you know like uh, my role you know in a company and and uh, the yoga teacher and so on like if i don't have anything would i still feel worthy mm. You know, if I'm nothing, would I still feel as something? Would I still feel as I matter to this planet, you know, <laughs> as a being? If I'm just going to be and not do, will I, will I still exist or will I just disappear like poof, you know, into nothingness? <laughs> and so I think my journey of surrendering was that, to come into being, to come into just releasing, you know, letting go of all identities and just be here now, you know, with whatever it is. and i still felt worthy so i was like okay challenge <laughs> i i checked it off <laughs> yeah you, you know and you are worthy you know so worthy and just thank you for that testimony thank you for that testament because as you were painting pictures you know with your words you actually you reminded me andra there was a scene i don't know have you seen um have you seen the superhero movie it's one of the spiderman movies like with him and and tony stark I think it's like no no way home or one of those movies with him and um you know Tony Stark Iron Man. Yeah, yeah, I know Iron Man. Yeah. 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 So so Peter Parker was had a scene in this movie with Iron Man and Peter Parker was actually throughout the movie mm -hmm. he was doing all these fantastical things with this souped up Spider-Man suit. It was like a technological marvel of his suit that was built by Iron Man. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. Iron this technology spider-man suit for him and he could shoot webs in different ways and he could do things and he had tentacles and he had arachnid things coming out and he was you know wrapping up the bad guys like lickety split you know it's easy right it was the you know the easy mode was on there was no hard mode for him in that suit mm -hmm. one point in time you know he was really angry he was pissed off in the movie because i guess he was had a moment of of doubt or a moment where he just was frustrated with with where things were going and where things were growing tony stark came down to him in the suit and he thought tony stark was somewhere on an island somewhere you know just remote controlling the suit but he actually came down himself okay you know and he opened up the suit and came out and he said you know if you're nothing without the suit then you shouldn't wear it you know mm. <laughs> he told him it was like because he had got accustomed to all these extra abilities yeah, that yeah. from that identity that he was holding with that suit that extra armor that he had on that gave him the upgrades so he had got all the upgrades and all those customizations and tony was telling him like if you're nothing without these customizations if you're nothing without these upgrades if you're nothing without the suit who are you who are you? you know yeah <laughs> you know so it was a it was a very humbling moment for him to to take off the suit and really go back to his roots. Yeah, wow. Yeah, just feeling that the power is within right. in any moment, you know, that you have so much to give, like you have so much to share and the only currency and the only thing that the only identity that matters is your energy. 
like your your vibration you know and it's nothing it's nothing about oh my god the goals that i have the identity the superpowers like what you mentioned you know with the suit like it could do so many things but at the same time it doesn't really matter because you're gonna leave that suit anyway you know because you're gonna outgrow it that's the point of spiritual growth you're gonna outgrow your own suit at a certain point you know and then once you do what you're gonna you know you're gonna hold on to it and be like no no put i'm, I'm not ready <laughs> So now I'm just fucking leave it. <laughs> right. You know, a great comparison. You know, I love that analogy too. It's like a like a snake shedding its own skin. You're gonna shed your own skin, you know? You're gonna change, you're gonna transform, you're gonna be something new, something different. At a certain you know? Yes. And it's so funny that you mentioned that because I don't I know so many people that hide behind that hide behind um a spiritual identities right like i not even you know like yes i'm a reiki practitioner blah, 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 but let's say that they use certain tools like for example plants or like plant medicine in order to gain these superpowers and i do like i do understand that you know they should be used in certain situations for you to see to have this kind of insights but afterwards like if they become like a, if they become like a crutch, you know, like not allowing you to, to fully shine in your naked, authentic self, then it's just, it's just another matrix. It's just another, like you, we went back. Okay. <clears throat> Big one. That's a great point that you make. So it's almost like you're, you're in a maze and you've now come out of the maze, but as soon as you exit the maze, you realize that you're in an even bigger maze. It's always <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, I'm very happy to be in the maze together with you <laughs> and together with other beautiful angels. I'm I'm very honored. Yeah, yeah. and we're we're finding our way, yeah. you know. Finding together. Thank you, Andra. Always, you know, always such an honor to just be with you, just be in your energy, just be in your presence and just to feel you know, the real things that come from you, the truths that come from you. And thank you for just expressing it authentically, you know, just the best way that you know how. Thank you for just letting it channel through and just <laughs> being a guide and letting out what is inside. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for teaching us with your beautiful <laughs> words and rhymes. And I love, I love everything that you do and that you're being an angel. And I love like hearing all your stories with, with all the other beautiful people that you're bringing in and you're just connecting the webs. And I, I, I had lives with, you know, someone that I met through you and I'm sure that, you know, so many people like meet through you and we we're just talking about, wow, you're such an angel. You're such a light, you know, for, for everyone and just connecting all these um, other lights. So thank you for your work. Thank you. Let's keep going. You know. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> we just started. Just right before we go, would you like to tell anybody about your what's coming up, what's new, you know, what's coming up on the horizon? Would you like to just touch on that for a little bit before we go? Yeah. Probably the sun <laughs> is coming up on the horizon very soon. <laughs> so be on the lookout for that. The sun is the most important part. <laughs> um, yeah, like I think I think a lot of people know about the reset by now. <clears throat> so we'll be having that if you want to take a uh, one month off from the matrix and fully start living your life <laughs> authentically. Then join me in Costa Rica in September. Um, very happy to be your guide. So Beautiful. thank you. Beautiful. Cool. All right, Andre. Well, take care. And we'll see you. Thank okay. you. Bye.